Uh, first, our um, readers of Rigable Magazine want to know how your family is doing, and particularly how Riley is doing right now. Yeah, um, everybody's doing really well. You know, and Riley's doing great. I think, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of neat we've added, you know, Finley. So mm -hmm. adding a, another child into the mix, it gives her much more of a support group. And uh, and she's doing incredibly well. Like, uh, you know, looking at her and, and watching her go about everyday life, I don't think anybody would realize that anything's wrong with her. So um, that's always a, a nice feeling as a parent. And, um, and she's, she's doing amazingly well. Um, can you also explain what was yours and Jenny's inspiration for starting the foundation? Um, you know, it's funny, we actually uh, started to kind of go about starting a foundation um, before Riley was even born. And uh, I remember uh, Terry, um, who's our uh, director for our foundation, was like, well, what do you want to do it for? You know, and I said, I don't know, something will come up or something with children, but nothing really, you know, has come into mind yet. And, and then lo and behold, she was born and, and born with 22Q, and it kind of made it easy. It was like somebody said, all right, well, you want to do something that needs attention, well, here's something that needs attention. And, and uh, you know, it was a, a great gift for us to be able to, to be able to have Riley and, and be able to share that gift with everybody. So how'd you go about then starting and building it from there? Um, yeah, it's <laughs> been yeah, a lot yeah. of hard work from a lot of people. Um, yeah, obviously I think sharing our story has been the biggest thing to be able to help build the foundation um, because it gives people a, an understanding. I think anytime you talk about something or um, you know you try to explain something, people get it, but they don't truly understand. But when you actually see it uh, and you see it firsthand and you see Riley, and you see not only the tough parts, you know, the uh, you know three months in the NICU and the multiple surgeries and uh, you know the different hurdles that she's overcome, but not only to see those, but to see the successes she had and get rid of the tubes and be able to just go around and, and play around the household like her brothers and sisters. So um, that that's uh, you know kind of been a, a big big thing for us. And, and it's given people a lot of hope, you know, how many parents, countless parents have come up and said thank you and thank you for everything you're doing. And I always say, you know, thank you. And you were the parents before us. If it wasn't for you, we, we might not ever know what, what Riley had. So it's been, it's been a big part played by a lot of different people. What are the goals that you have set for the foundation? Um, well, a lot of different goals. I think, you know, financially, uh, you always kind of try and set a number. We've talked about different things, and we've said, "Oh, you know, two million dollars in two years, and, and things like that." But at the same time, I don't want to put a ceiling on what we're able to raise, and I don't want to put a cap. It's not like we're going to get to that, and I want to stop. Um, so financially, whatever we can raise is great. You know, the more the better. I mean, I think that's with any foundation. The more money you can raise, the more things you can do with it, and the more people you can help. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me, I think, uh, it's, as far as a testing aspect. You know, I would love it if every child that was born was pre-screened for this. Um, you know, at least at least post-screen. As soon as the baby's born, do a genetic testing just to find out that they don't have it. Because um, I think if you have that answer, um, just like anything, you know, there's a relief as a parent uh, when you go through screening to know that your child doesn't have diabetes, your child doesn't have Down syndrome, your child that not that there's anything wrong with a child born with those, but it takes a burden off of your shoulders, and so. Um, if that's something that through this foundation and through Riley's story and every story of every child that had 22Q, we can be able to do is to have every child tested for this. Um, one of two things happens. One, it does show how many children are being born with this. And two, um, you know, it gives those parents an answer. You know, that parent in the middle of nowhere who might not have a hospital close by that deals with 22Q is something that, that hopefully they can like I said, have that blueprint or at least an idea, and then as parents they can make whatever choices and, and continue just to educate people on it. You know, which is really exciting for the first time in in history, or you know, the Journal of Pediatrics for the first time ever is actually going to be a section on 22Q, and and that's huge. You know, these pediatricians around the country who didn't know anything about it are now being informed and being taught about 22Q, and that. That's a big thing for the parents, but more importantly, it's a huge thing for the children. Yeah, I think um, you know one of the big things about early detection is um, when, you, when you find out something right away, um, especially when a baby's so young. Uh, as a parent, uh, you you have time to process all that and go through that and have a plan. And then what happens is you're you're able to interact, uh, whether it's with other parents. The children are able to interact with 
not only other kids with 22Q, but just other kids in general. And that helps, you know, I think, I look at Riley's success and everything she's been through, and I think a large part of that has been her interaction with other people. You know, one of the uh, syndromes or uh, one of the symptoms of the syndrome is behavioral issues that come on later in life. Well, I think a lot of that is the fact that uh, maybe a lot of those children didn't interact because the parents didn't know what was going on. It's the no one's fault, it's just reality. And I think um, the sooner, just like anything, it's if you take a kid at, you know, at two years old and have them play in preschool or around other kids, they're able to be able to uh, develop socially. Uh, whereas if you didn't know the answers and, and you're going through tough times and that kid, you know, you take them at six or seven years old and try and have them interact for the first time with children, that's gonna be a tough, that's tough for anybody, let alone a kid dealing with already, you know, something medical. And I think, you know, having early detection leads to early interaction and it leads to a lot more positive things and allows kids to get over those hurdles that they might develop earlier on in life and, and then never have those issues. Um, what about, you said you didn't have an expectation or goals, so you just, there's no ceiling for it, but has it exceeded more than you thought that it um, would when you first started? Uh, it's been inc incredibly overwhelming, you know, the amount of support from people, whether it's, you know, at fundraisers we've done, um, you know, people just writing checks and sending money in and say, here, here we want to help, or, um, you know, people like uh, the Augustinos, who's uh, you know, not only been a huge supporter of every fundraiser we did, had the first fundraiser at the Augustinos, but you know, every 22nd of the month for 22Q, they donate money from each of their pizza sales. Um, they run PSAs through the um, stadium on the TVs here and do everything they can help, you know, and the, the local businesses, the Doggerholics, Candy Alley, all these places that give portions of their proceeds and it's constantly just people, um, you know, kind of sharing and, and helping out and feeling a part of something really great. And um, it's, been, it's been incredible how, how much uh, support we've received, um, you know, from a, from a parent standpoint, but then as a foundation from a financial standpoint, the amount of money that people donated their time, the volunteers. And we had a, con a concert last year from, at, our, at our casino night, and, and you know, the, the guy gives up his, his free time with him and his band to come and, and play. And that's, you know, that's, that's an overwhelming thing. And you know, sometimes it's not always money, but the amount of time that people donate and is, is, just, is just as valuable.